Hi folks and welcome back to my channel. In this video you're going to see a couple of sessions of me hacking on the Yocto project documentation. My goals here were to improve the contribution guidelines so that things are clearer for anyone who's new to submitting patches to the project itself. We've got some info on the wiki on contribution guidelines as well as some information in the docs. So after these changes and some further improvements later on, we should be able to consolidate all the contribution guidelines into one section in the documentation itself. And after that, the wiki pages will probably become redirects to that content in the documentation. And what you should see in this video as well is that it's actually pretty easy to edit the documentation and to submit patches for it. The new version's got the docs written in restructured text that it's built using Sphinx. So if you've ever worked on documentation for a Python package, you're going to feel right at home with this. If you're not familiar with these things, don't worry too much. You'll see in the rest of this video that it's not that difficult to work with. There is some syntax to learn for restructured text, but it's not as crazy as the old .book XML sources. So that's enough of an introduction. Let's get started. So since we're going to be hacking on the Yocto project docs, what we first need to do is get a copy of the documentation sources. So what I've got here is the list of source repositories for the Octo project opened and close to the top we have the Octo docs which is fairly obvious and we're going to grab the URL here and copy that and we're going to use that to clone those docs onto my machine so that I can hack on them. So this is a fairly fresh virtual machine. I've not built the docs on here before. I imagine there's going to be some things that I need to build the docs which I don't already have installed. But the best way to find out is going to be to you know, try building the documentation and see what happens. So we're just looking in here in the documentation folder within Yocto docs and there is a make file. And I believe from previous uh, work I've done that we just need to run make HTML. Cool, so first of all we don't have Sphinx installed. Now you can probably install this with your distro package manager but I tend to just use pip and I don't even have pip installed on here so let's install pip which is the python package manager and that will let us install python packages so let's try pip install sphinx again pip not found let's try pip3 install sphinx cool that's better. So looking at this there isn't a requirements file we can just feed into pip but I do know that we're going to need the theme that the docs uses which I believe is sphinx underscore rtd theme. Yeah so this is the read the docs theme that is used. So hopefully now we have the things we need installed to be able to build these docs. So we see here the sphinx build command wasn't found. What I do know is that that is found in my dot local slash bin directory in my home directory. Um, we see sphinx dash build over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit our uh, bash profile to extend the path. No, it's not there, so I guess this is just dot .profile. Yes, this is the right file. So we've already got the line that extends this to include cargo.bin, so we're going to use the same format and extend this to include dot .local slash bin in front and we're going to start a new terminal to hopefully pick up. No, that doesn't pick up the path. 
So for now I'm just going to add this manually and then I'll get the path automatically next time I log in. So we're just going to add manually local slash bin to our path and then we should see Stinks build available. So let's go back to the project directory we're in, back to the documentation directory and try building those documents again. And we are missing pi yaml. Cool, this is looking slightly better. Um, so now we've got the dependencies that we need installed on this virtual machine. This is going to run ahead and build some documentation. So we successfully managed to build the documentation there. The next step is to give this a test. Now, there may be other ways of testing this out, but this is the way I like to give this a test. So we've got underscore build slash HTML directory where it's put the HTML output. And what I tend to do is just use the HTTP server module that's built into Python. And that will open port 8000 and run a tiny little HTTP server on there. So we're going to go back to our browser and we're going to go to localhost port 8000 because Visual Studio Code has forwarded that port for us nicely and we have a locally built copy of the Yocto project documentation here ready to hack on. So we have the source, we've got a successful build so when we edit this we can rebuild it and see you know what our changes actually look like, how things will end up. So I think we're ready to go. So I've jumped into the section of the docs that I want to edit first. This is a section of the dev manual that covers how to submit a change to the Yocto project itself. And if we look through this section there's a couple of things I'm probably going to tweak. But the first one is um, this uh, down the bottom about uh, commonly used testing repositories which exist for Open Embedded Core. Um, so this lists Ross's master under test branch and it lists the master next branch of the Pocky repository. Now after having a quick chat with Ross on IRC we've decided that this probably shouldn't really be listed in the docs as it's more of a personal test branch and also I think we want to add the master next branches for other repositories to this list here and kind of expand this coverage a little bit. So what I've done in my Visual Studio Code Editor is reloaded the window with the root directory being the Yocto Docs project itself and we want to find the corresponding source for this bit of the docs that I'm looking at on here. So looking at the URL, this is um, devmanual slash devmanual common tasks dot html. So in the docs, we're going to look for devmanual and we're going to look for devmanual common tasks. And in this case, it's a RST file, which is restructured text. And this is a single, very large file kind of 11 and a half, nearly 12,000 line file that corresponds to this entire page of documentation. So let's search for this ross slash mock phrase so we can find the bit of the docs that we're looking for. And yeah, we found this section here, which if we scroll up, starts off with the heading submitting a change to the Yoxo project. So I'm not going to 
record me hacking around on the text of the documentation as that's a fairly slow laborious process <laughs> so I'll pause here and come back when I've got something to show so I've made my first change here what I've done is I've dropped the reference to the ROS slash mock branch as I discussed and instead of just referencing the hockey master next branch I've referenced the master next branches of both open embedded core and pocky i've kind of described these a little better so the master next branch for ecore itself just contains proposed changes to the core metadata the same name branch for pocky combines the proposed changes to bitbake as well as the open embedded core layer as well as the Pocky distro and the kind of official YOL2 PSPs as well. I'm also going to say um, that other layers may have, may have similar testing branches. There is no formal requirement or standard. For these, so please check the documentation for the players you are contributing to. And let's also say that stable branches may have next branches. So Similarly, stable branches maintained by the project may have dash next branches which collect proposed changes. I'm going to say may have corresponding next branches which contain collect proposed changes for example Jonathan next and gates off next branches in both open embedded core and repositories so we've expanded this a little more let's check that these branch names actually exist do we see Donfell next yes do we see Gatescarth get next yes they exist in Pocky they exist in Open Embedded Core so I'm happy with that so we've got some changes that we're roughly happy with at least at a first glance what we want to do is rebuild the docs with these changes so i went ahead and exited visual studio code and reconnected so that i get the correct path here so now we should be able to build the html if we're in the right directory and it should just rebuild the file that's changed and then we're going to go into build HTML and we're going to rerun our Python web server so that we can see how the documents render. So, coming back to this section on submitting changes to the Yocto project we see that our new text is here but I've got some leftover text that I failed to remove so let's go back here pull our terminal out of the way and get rid of this stray text let's have another terminal for building the documentation so that we can leave our little web server running And let's take another look. Cool. 
So the bit of stray text has gone and we're down to something that looks fairly reasonable. So I'm happy with that as an initial change, just checking that the links work and they do. So what we're going to do is we're going to commit this as a documentation change. So let's take a look. We have a diff that looks fine. No white space issues or anything else weird here. So we're going to wrap that and we're going to commit the change. Now this is where I don't really know the kind of standard format for documentation changes for the commit message. So let's have a look at what we see for this changes to this file. What does it look like? So we just say either dev manual or dev manual slash dev manual common tasks. So let's go with that style. So what did we do? We fixed the references to the commonly used testing branches. So we're going to say fix refs to testing branches. And let's show you that. I do want to expand on this a little bit more. So I'm going to set my editor. This is another thing I need to do in a little more permanent way. But I need it to apply only to Visual Studio Code and not to my shell. So I haven't quite figured that out yet. But Let's set my editor and let's get commit and end so that we can type some more details in here. So we say fix refs to testing branches. So here we have slightly more detail in the commit message. We have basically saying after discussions on IRC, we concluded the ROS slash MUP branch shouldn't be there. And instead we should list dash next branches for embedded and pocky. So we've done that, what I see is that my email address here is not configured correctly on this VM yet. So we're going to keep this commit as it is. We're then going to fix our email address. We're going to explicitly set the name. And we're going to explicitly set the email address. And we're going to amend that and add the new sign in line. Remove the old one. And we have a patch that we're fairly happy with. So let's move on to the next change. So looking at the next section here I see that there's mention of plans to use patchwork and that's a bit out of date because we are using patchwork for tracking patch status. So what I want to do is edit this to link to our patchwork instance. So what I've done is removed the section from here and I've moved it down into the section that talks about using email to submit a patch and I've at the bottom of this now called out the patchwork instance that the project has and I've also mentioned that we feed each patch that's sent to the mailing lists to patch test to check for common mistakes and if patch test finds any common mistakes it will notify the submitter by email I've left in the note that the system is imperfect, changes can sometimes get lost, and if you've not had any feedback for a while, it is reasonable to send a ping. So again, we're going to check how that 
renders. Just need to rebuild HTML documentation and flick over to my browser window. So yeah, we go straight from discussion about next branches into the sections about how to submit changes. And then we, when we talk about using email to submit a patch, at the end of this we mention patchwork. And we have a link to patchwork instance and the note about sending a ping if changes have been idle for a while is now in the section about using email to submit a patch. So the other thing that I want to move is this thing about using the developer certificate of origin. I don't really want this detail in the section on pull requests as kind of new submitters to the project might not be following this process because they won't have right access to a contrib repository. So I want to pull out this discussion of what a commit message should look like um, on its own before we start talking about the different methods of submitting changes. So what I've done is I've broke the steps out for preparing changes for submission into a kind of initial subsection that covers the common steps of committing changes locally, adding a signed off by line, referencing um, a bug if you're fixing a bug that's tracked in our bugzilla, and then the individual sections on submitting using the pull request scripts and submitting via email don't have to repeat any of that and it looks a little bit neater so I built those changes and if we scroll back up yeah we have a section on preparing the changes for submission and then we go into the two different ways that you can submit the changes so that's looking pretty good one thing I do want to change is this text here about using git send email I'm not too comfortable with the way it says import files into your mail client because that's not exactly what git send email is doing so I'm going to commit the changes I've just made and then I'm going to update this line as well so I've just made a small tidy up here and change this text to describe a little more clearly what's going on so it says send patches via email using the git send email command and we're going to commit this change So this is fine to just have a one-line commit message. So the next thing that I've done is took a look at this page on the Open Embedded Wiki that documents the patch submission process and kind of overlaps a lot with the information that is in the main docs. So what I want to do is make sure that all this information is also covered in main documentation and then in the future we can modify this page to just be a link to the mod to the docs itself. So I had a look through this and most of the relevant information is already covered in the documentation but what I did see is that there's this section on backporting fixes to a stable release and there's this section on um, the fact that patches might get feedback and how you should respond to the feedback on patches. So I wanted to add both of those to the documentation properly. So this is what I've done. I've added a new section on how to respond to patch review and how to amend your patches and resubmit them with an updated version number. And I've added the section on submitting changes to stable release branches, which describes kind of briefly what the policy is about patches going into master first and the fact that changes are not likely to get accepted onto end of life branches. And then I've pointed out the steps to follow 
to get a patch, to get a fix submitted to the stable branch. So these two sections have been added and then I've rebuilt the documentation and looking at this we see nicely formatted sections here on responding to patch review and on submitting changes to the stable release branch. So what I'm going to do now is commit both of those as two separate patches, first this section on responding to patch review and then this section on submitting changes to the stable release branches. So now I've committed the changes added in these two sections. There's one last change I want to make before I actually submit these patches to the mailing list. Now what we've got here, we start off with preparing changes for submission and then we've got two different ways of submitting the patches. One is pushing to a contrib repository and submitting a pull request. The other is sending patches by email. And at the minute the using a contrib repository is covered first and said to be the recommended procedure and using email is covered second. Now this isn't really great for newcomers to the project who won't have commit access to a contrib repository. What I think we should do is cover the email patch submission process first and then use the approach that's covered in the wiki page here on the Open Embedded Wiki which is to say for larger patch series it's preferable to send a pull request. So we're going to go that way around, we're going to move the sections around and edit the introduction to those sections and take a look at it once it's done. So looking at the documentation source again, what I've done is I've moved the using email to submit a patch section so it immediately follows the section on preparing changes for submission. I've dropped the first paragraph that was in that section and then I've moved the section on using the scripts to push change upstream and request a pull. Down after that and added an initial paragraph that is basically taken from this bit of text in the wiki page because I think that's a pretty good description as it is. And so, yeah, I'm, I think this is fairly good. Let's rebuild the documentation and take another look at this and just check that it kind of flows correctly now that we've changed the order. So scrolling back up, we have instructions on preparing changes for submission and then we go straight into using email to submit a patch which is the, the usual thing that most new contributors will be doing and then we say for larger patch series it's preferable to send a pull request and we describe how to submit to a contrib repository and send a pull request to the mailing list and then the sections I added on responding to patch review and submitting changes to the stable release branches follow that. And I just noticed that there's a typo here, it should be changes to stable release branches. And so I'm just gonna make a note of that and fix that after I have committed this change that I've made to move the sections. So let's dive back into the source, add these changes and make another commit. So I've wrote a commit message here which describes the changes and makes a note of where I got the new opening paragraph for the section on submitting pull requests. So I'm happy with this one and I'm going to commit this and then we're going to fix this brief typo here. So we're going to say using scripts plus changes upstream and hang on, no, this is the wrong thing. 
So this is the section I was looking for. I was getting confused then. Was here. So yeah, submitting changes to the stable release branches. And since this is a section I added, I don't want to add this typo fix to a new commit. I want to include it in the commit that already exists, adding this section. So let's have a look at the log. Yes, yeah, so we've got this commit here. I'm going to grab the commit hash for that. We're going to add the changes. Which don't seem to be happy there. Yes, we've not saved the file. I'm getting over enthusiastic here. So we're going to add the changes and then fix up this commit. Oh, I don't have my git fix up command on here. So let's do this the manual way. We mark the commit as a fix up and then we rebase on something we know is in the recent history but before the change we want to modify um, we add the auto squash argument to rebase and we get an editor here and it's pre-filled the um, fix up here for this commit and we should just be able to save and close that and it will merge that change into the earlier commit. So now we've got a series of commits I'm fairly happy with. We've got uh, fixing refs, fix the refs to testing branches, update and move patchwork reference, tidy up the patch submission process, documents, describe git send email accurately, describe how to handle patch feedback, describe how to propose changes to stable branches, and reorder the patch submission instructions. So I'm pretty happy with these. I do want to shorten some of these commit summary lines. So I'm going to take out this dev manual prefix from the front because you know the next bit of this kind of repeats it anyway. It looks like a fairly unique file name. So we should be able to do that. Again we're going to do that with git rebase-i against origin master and for each of these patches we're just going to say reword and that will let us edit just the commit message for each patch and then we're going to basically just strip these leading prefixes off. Nice thing with Vim key bindings, I can do this once and then just use the dot key to repeat what I last did. So now let's take another look at those commits. So we have slightly shorter summary lines and I think these are in a fairly good position now. So now I've got a bunch of documentation patches that I'm pretty happy with and I'll go through the process of submitting these to the documentation mailing list hopefully for inclusion in the documentation proper. So let's see if we can find some submission instructions in the readme. I think there's a readme file here, yeah there's a file called readme. Let's see what we have in here. So it discusses how the manuals are organized, how things work with Sphinx, how the website works, how to build the docs. Lots of other information, but is there anything in here about submitting changes to the docs? Okay, so the contribution instructions are in the top level readme file for this repository. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one additional commit now to just reference this section on sending patches within this readme file that I was looking at so that it's less confusing for anyone else that follows. 
So I've just added a very short addition to this readme file in the documentation directory saying see the top level readme file for details of where to send documentation patches and we're going to add that and commit that. So I've just wrote a brief commit message here saying that this might help anyone looking for patch contribution guidelines in the documentation directory itself and I'm happy with this. So let's now take a quick read of what those contribution guidelines are. Um, we just need to send the patches to docs at lists.yoptoproject.org and I have subscribed to that mailing list in expectation of that so I think we're ready to go. What I do like to do rather than just using git send email directly I like to format the patches and check that they look good first. So what we're going to do is git format patch we're going to say to this docs list and we're going to put them in a patches directory and we're going to include all the patches between origin master and the current commit. So we have eight patches in our patches directory. Let's take a brief look at these and make sure they make sense. Okay, so from here is showing badly, but it's just on this first commit. So this is an artifact of me starting development before I had set up the git config properly on this VM. Uh, what I'm going to do is just step through the commits and reset the author on all of them to make sure that everything's happy. So I've just used git rebase to step through all these patches and ensure that the committer and the author are correct. And that does look a bit better now. So I'm happy with all of these patches. What I'm going to do is send them to the mailing list. So they've already got this two line in the patches. So we can just use git send email with a list of file names. And it won't work because we need to install git's email capability. This is a quirk of Debian Ubuntu or Fedora type distros, they don't include all the dependencies required for git send email out of the box. So hopefully that's enough and we can now do git send email. And it's going to give me a list of all the patch files it's looking at. And we're just going to accept the defaults and we're going to say send all the emails. So I've submitted these patches using git send email and then I've waited a minute and taken a look over at the page on lists.yoptoproject.org that's got the history for this mailing list and just confirmed that all my patches have arrived on the list correctly. They look okay. and ready for folks to review. So I'm going to wait and see what sort of feedback I get on those changes. So we're now a week later and this is giving folks a chance to review the patches that I sent to the mailing list and send some feedback. So I've got my inbox open here with the emails highlighted that I want to look at. And what we're going to do is just look through some of the feedback, as I say, and modify our patches to take account of that feedback and send a version 2. So looking at these, I sent eight patches. There is feedback on patches 1 and 6 and 7 out of the 8. So let's look at these in turn. So the first patch was fixing the references to testing branches. Had a little bit of discussion. There was a note that we have these directives here that simplify linking to things like the Yocto Git repository. 
it'd also be good to add one for the OE Git repositories and then use that in place of a direct link there and then after looking a little further we could use a yocto git url constant instead of saying git.yoctoproject.org but actually it's it's kind of redundant if I look at this again we're given a link to the Pocky repository and then immediately following it by mention of project.org where that repository is. We don't really need that if we've got a link to the repository. So we're going to drop that out and we're going to replace these with the directives and probably add this OE git directive if I can figure out how to do that. So let's dive straight into those changes. I have the docs open here in Visual Studio Code and what I want to do is find my changes again and I'm going to change the text first before we do anything else. So we're going to use the directives that were mentioned in the email so I just brought the email up on another screen so that I can replicate what was said so it was the Yocto git directory and then which link within that we want to give So I think that's the directive, if I can spell it. And let's tidy that up. And we don't need mention of git.yoxyproject.org. So now we just say this branch is part of the Pocky repository and combines proposed changes to bit like core metadata and the Pocky distro. And the other one, we do the same thing by adding an OE git directive. So this should be easier to edit this way. And again, we don't need to say it's on git.openembedded.org because we're providing a link. So we say this branch is part of the Open Embedded Core repository and contains proposed changes to the core metadata. So that also looks good now. So that's our text changes. We also want to find where this Yocto git directive is defined and see if we can add an OE git directive as well. So let's use grep to find that. And should be able to use rip grep on here. No. So I've been using rip grep on other systems. So let's add rip grep because it's actually really handy. So rip grep has been installed here. Let's use it to find that block to git directive. And see if we can see where it's defined. So we've got uses of it in the documentation. What we're looking for is how it's actually defined. So it's defined in documentation conf.py by the looks of it. So let's have a look at this. So we have a list of external links and substitutions. This looks like the right thing. We have a Yocto git. What we would like is an open embedded git. So let's copy this and change it to Marie. Um, 
and you just check that this is not what you want. So yeah, it will just add slash open embedded core onto the end of git.openembedded.org if we do it this way. So that looks correct for adding this directive and then using both directives just to make the links a little more flexible and tolerant of any changes to how our repositories are hosted. So let's go back into documentation, rebuild HTML documentation. Now that's built, let's go into the directory where the results are and start the Python web server again. Apparently I need to say Python 3 on this. Debian VM, I always forget that since I spend quite a bit of time on Arch Linux. So let's go to localhost for 8000, let's look in development tasks, common tasks, and find the section on making changes, which I believe is where this is. Yeah, here we are. Okay, so we've got something a little bit messed up here. That doesn't look too good. Let's fix that first. So, okay, we need to line this up on two characters of indent rather than three. No, it's not. It's using three below. So that's matching how things are below. So the indentation sometimes needs to be considered carefully with how restructured text handles lists. Let's go back into documentation in a new shell and rebuild HTML and see if this looks any better. Excellent, yes, this looks neater. Let's test both the links out. So open embedded core should go to this git repository, Pocky should go to this git repository, both of those work and they both look good. So that's looking fairly neat. We're going to amend our commits. So we're going to do this using fix up commits and then rebase everything when we're happy. So let's look what we've changed. So we've added here we get directive and we've used the directives instead of direct links. So we can add the directive as its own commit first. So we can commit this and see if there's a pattern for changes to conf.py. So the last thing I did, I just said conf.py as a prefix. So let's do that. Commit dash s conf.py and we get direct. So we've just clarified this with an extra line of description saying it simplifies linking to git repositories on openembedded.org and I'm happy with that. So the other thing I want to do is a fix up commit for the commit which modified the description of the dash next branches. So we're going to find the commit we want to fix up in our history. It'll probably be the first one. Yep, so we're going to grab the commit hash for that and we're going to say, let's check where we are. So we want to add the file we want to git commit fix up that commit hash. I'm just going to leave that fix up commit for now until we've handled all the feedback. So coming back to our email, we have handled feedback on patch 1 out of 8. Let's look at patch 6 out of 8. So on this one, 
the feedback was that there was a Yocto wiki directive we could use and we can also use this distro name no cap minus one constant which is updated on each release and that's it just means the branch name for the previous release with no capitalization so if the current release is Gatescarth that will say done fell when we do the next release after that it will get changed in the configuration file to say Gatescarth and what it will mean is that our documentation is always up to date with our example branch names rather than referencing you know, several year old branch names and things falling stale so let's make both of these changes let's find out where we are this is talking about submitting changes to the stable release branches and we link to this wiki page we want to replace it with this directive here and then further on we when we say the git format patch example we can use the previous branch name here so yeah that'll be good and that was the only feedback so let's implement both of those so here we are where this was added in the source code what we're going to do is change this link to use the Yocto wiki directive and we just need to say slash releases and we don't need the link at the end yeah that looks much nicer and we also wanted to fix this example command here I'm just gonna for this one I'm just gonna copy the constant name because it's quite a long one to type and just bring this down onto its own line because it's quite long So let's update the HTML and take another look at this. So we found the right section in the HTML documentation. We're going to check that the link to the wiki still works. That does not work well. Okay, so this is missing wiki slash in here and I wonder whether this is a problem with just this usage or whether it affects other places where this directive is used so let's take a look for Yocto wiki directive yeah so all the other places this is used have slash wiki slash in front so yeah we just need to add that in and let's line this up. I don't really like breaking these directives so we're going to bring this onto its own line update the HTML and take another look at that So now if we try the link it goes to the correct page that's good and then the other thing we changed was we use a directive down here and it substituted that in for Dunfell so that looks correct so again we're happy with those now both of these were feedback on the patch that added this section on submitting changes to the stable release branches so we're going to do a fix up commit for that so let's find it which is this commit here we're going to grab the commit hash we're going to add the file will change and we're going to create a fix up commit 
So that's that bit of feedback handled. And I'm going to take a look at the last thing here, which I think was Quentin giving feedback on all these addition lines here before realizing that it's actually just moving text that pre-existed below. So the only thing I want to check is whether there is anything in this paragraph we've added from the wiki. Yeah, the only thing is we've said, do we want to define what we mean by larger? I don't want to do that right now. I want to leave it as it was from the wiki for now. So I'm happy to leave that as is. Cool, so we've handled all the feedback that we got sent by email. We've now got some fix-up commits. So let's take a look. We have a couple of fix-ups. We have a commit to add GUI Git directive, which we need to reorder so it's earlier in our patch series so it gets added before we use it. We then add all our patches and this is based on origin slash master. So what we're going to do is fetch any recent changes to the documentation that have been made upstream and we're going to rebase everything we've done on origin slash master and we're going to do that interactively and we're going to automatically squash those fix up commits into the commits that they're supposed to fix up and let's see what happens. So it's ordered these, so this fix up applies to this commit, this fix up applies to this commit and all we need to do is move this addition of a new directive right up to the top of the list, so that happens first. And then if I save and close this file, Git will go ahead and rebase everything. And that was pretty quick. It was successfully rebased and updated. So we have an updated patch series. Let's take a quick look at Git log. So Yep, we now, based on top of the changes that Nicholas made recently, our first commit adds the OE Git directive, and then we go in with the slightly modified versions of the patches that we sent previously. So let's send version 2 of our patch series. So what I'm going to do is I have a patches directory with a patch that I sent in the intervening time last week. So we don't want that in place. I always remove things from my patches directory just so I don't accidentally send the wrong thing. And then we're going to use git format patch. I'm going to see if there is a an appropriate format patch command in history. And this looks like the right one. What we're going to do is modify this to add dash v2 and I think that's all we really need. The feedback's fairly small. This isn't as strict as some things like the kernel where you're expected to send a new cover letter with detailed description of the changes between v1 and v2. So I'm just going to send the series with v2 in the subject lines. So let's quickly take a look at one or two of these patches, just check they're happy. So the dash v2 argument format patch added v2 in the header here. And things look good. It's got the new directives in here, so yep, I'm happy with these. And I can just do git send email 
for everything in patches. And coming back to my inbox to wrap things up, I've got patch v2 emails sat here in my inbox that have been sent to the list. So this looks pretty good. I'm going to leave it here for now. So there we are. If you've watched this through, you've now got no excuses for not submitting patches to the documentation if you find any problems. So thank you very much for your time. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Please subscribe to the channel so that you know when I post more videos in the future. And please leave comments as well. I really need to know what sort of content people are interested in, what you want to see next. So that's it from me. So thank you very much.